Now it is time to look at this syntax of how to actually create a test class and how to actually create a unit test, specifically the syntax of unit test. So here it is. So uh, in order to create a test class, all what we need to do is we need to specify at is test annotation before the class, right? So like let's say if we are declaring a class, class uh, ABC or class calculator, let's say, or uh, there is, uh, no, not calculator, but like let's say class ABC and we want to make it a test class. So in that case, what we uh, will be doing is we'll be just annotating that class with at is test annotation and that class will automatically become a test class and uh, now let's talk about how to actually uh, create a unit test or how to actually mark a, uh, a method as a unit test right so uh, and again inside a test class only you can create test methods earlier uh, you were able to create test methods inside the class itself uh, but now you can only create test methods inside a test class and in order to create a test method inside a test class We've got two options. Number one is again uh, mentioning the method as uh, with at is test annotation, uh, which uh, like just add at is test annotation before the declaration of the method, and this test uh, this method will automatically become a test method for that particular class. And so yeah, static void test name, and then over here you can just write down the code block with the help of which you'll be able to test uh, the code which is uh, which you want to actually test. The next method or the next way we can uh, create a method as a test, uh, unit, as a unit test is by declaring or by adding test method keyword uh, in its declaration. So over here, we, uh, like the name of the method is uh, test name, which returns nothing almost. That's why we have written void and it's a static method. And by the way, all the test methods should be static. Okay. And... Uh, and, and uh, if you do not, and just annotate it with at is test annotation. But if you do not want to use at is test annotation, then in that case, you can declare this method with test method keyword as well. So all what is different in here is adding this test method keyword in the declaration itself, rather than adding an annotation of at is test uh, before the method declaration. And after it, you can write down the code block. And that's all about uh, the syntax of how to create a test class and uh, how to create a unit test method inside it. Now in order to explain you how to create a test class and how to write down unit test methods inside it, uh, we have got an example. And in this example, we have created a class uh, which acts as a calculator. And in a calculator, all what we do is add, subtract, multiply, divide, these kind of stuff. So that uh, you'll be able to understand it in an easier way. So over here, we've created a class, calculate, and this class has got integer A and integer B, and it returns the result. And uh, yeah, so if you if you're defining uh, if you're defining a, like uh, like two variables uh, with the help while creating an object of calculate class with the help of a parameterized constructor, you can do it like this, uh, which which we'll understand later on. But yeah, so in order to add, all what we need to do is uh, a plus b, and it should be like the value of a plus b should be added into result, and similarly for subtract, it should be a minus b. Uh, and for multiply, it should be a into b. And for divide, we've got we've covered this condition already that if b is zero, then result should be zero. Otherwise, it will def, uh, it will give us an exception of non-defined number. Uh, else, just add a by a divided by b into result. And if, if there is a method as well, which uh, the name of that method is get result, and this basically returns the result uh, result of whatever operation that you have. Perform. So this is a very simple class that we have uh, created, which has got a very, very simple functionality. And why we have created a very, very simple functionality so that you do not focus on to creating these functionalities, but focus on to testing these functionalities, right? And in order to test whether this calculate class is working as expected or not, uh, we need to create a test class. And in order to create a test class, all what we need to do is we need to create a class and annotate it by at is test method, or oh, no, at is test annotation. So over here, we have already created a test calculate class. Uh, let's have a look at it. Okay, so see, the name I have written down is uh, test calculate. It's not compulsory uh, for you to have uh, the name with, uh, the name of the, this particular class should have test, but it's a, it's a better thing uh, because it, uh, like, 
by just reading this class's name you will be able to identify that this class is created in order to test the calculate class so that's why i have given this nomenclature uh, it's not compulsory but this is you have to uh, like annotate a class with at, at is test annotation in order to make it as a test class now uh, in order to test the subtract functionality we have created this unit test now let's look at it one by one it's a static method which returns nothing so this is something that we already know a test method should return nothing and it should be a static method right and uh, whether you're declaring it as public private or anything it doesn't make any difference or does, doesn't make any sense because uh, it automatically gets executed so it's better not to write down anything right and uh, uh, this test subtract method will basically evaluate whether the subtract functionality is working as expected or not so in order to do that what we have done is we have created an object of calculate class calculate c is equals to new calculate 50 and then 30 so 50 is going to be a and 30 is going to be b and we have called the function c dot subtract so in these two lines let me tell you what will happen an object will be created of the calculate class which will have a and b a as 50 and b as 30 right that's uh, exactly how it's going to be and now we are uh, calling the subtract method over here right while calling the subtract method uh, in this calculate class what will happen it will call this method and it will minus b from a and add it into the result variable so 50 minus 30 is uh, go is like will be equal to 20 which will get stored inside uh, again mm, inside this particular object only so this will be 20 this is a variable this is b and this is result right so this will be stored over here and when we'll be calling this uh, c dot get result inside integer r will be getting the value of 20 right just like this now what we're doing over here is uh, we are just using a method called as assert equals so there's a method in system class uh, called as assert with the help of which you flag that uh, while testing uh, whether the test is resulting into a success or a failure right and how do you do that with the help of system.assert method uh, you compare the results uh, with the expected results into a particular test so what we are expecting over here is 20 and if r is 20 then in this case this uh, test is going to be marked as success and if it's going to be something else than 20 then this test will uh, will be marked as failed and the test uh, and the test run or the testing will be failed so that's how it basically works similar to this method of subtract we have created it for multiply divide and for addition of course so at is test static void name is test multiply giving like making sure that uh, you are uh, you are naming the methods variables in the right format is very very important if uh, you are creating any application of your or if you're writing down any code because it makes it easier for anyone to understand the code that you have written down it's it's not a good thing for a great developer to give the no nomenclature uh, to use the naming conventions which are difficult for the other person to understand uh, it will not uh, like it will not uh, be beneficial for you or for the organization that you're working for but uh, the otherwise is of course going to be beneficial for you as well as for the organization so yeah okay now let's come back to test multiply uh, in this again we have created a new object uh, with the values of 5 and 3 for a and b and now we have called the multiply method and in the result we should get 5 into 3 that should be equal to 15 which is exactly what we are comparing or what we are uh, checking out in the assert equals method and uh, yeah that's how it goes when it comes to divide uh, we have created another uh, object with the value 10 and 2 for the variables and 
Yeah, we are calling the divide method and uh, like 10 div uh, divided by 2 should be equal to 5. This is exactly what we are comparing in here. But there is one more thing that we need to test in the divide. That is if B's value is equal to 0, then in that case, uh, the program should return a value of 0. So that's exactly what we are doing over here. So these, like, these are multiple situations into a single unit test. As I said earlier as well, to test a particular functionality, you can create a unit test. And if there are multiple situations that you need to cover up for the same functionality, you can write it down inside a sing single method. Uh, and again, if you want to uh, divide it into multiple methods as well, you can do that depending on to how complex the testing is or how complex testing is required in order to test that particular functionality or how many situations are there. There are, there are multiple variables based on which you can, divide, uh, you can decide how to do it. But yeah, we have got just two situations in which uh, one is the positive behavior and another one is a negative behavior. So this is a negative behavior that we are testing. Remember, we talked about uh, testing a positive behavior, like uh, whether it is returning a correct output uh, to the expected values as an input, and uh, that's positive behavior. Negative behavior is basically uh, whether it is giving the correct outputs for the values that is not expected as an input. And the third thing is was the user thing, but let's not discuss that right now. So if we'll divide uh, 10 by 0, it should return 0. And this is exactly what we are comparing in this assert equals method over here, right? Similarly, we have created the add functionality. And in, the, in this add functionality, uh, all what we are trying to do is uh, we are just creating another uh, calculate object in which 10 and 20 are the values. And um, we are adding it. And then we are getting the result back into R. And we are comparing it to 30 because 10 plus 20 is equals to 30. You must be thinking that I missed out two lines in this particular code and uh, that was intentional. Don't worry, I'm, I'll be covering that up right now. So this system.runAs method is basically used uh, to define that which user will be executing this particular functionality. right? So user is again uh, what we are fetching with the help of an SQL query. And uh, while defining this user, what we are doing over here is uh, we are defining that which user will be using this particular functionality, right? So like let's say there are some users who are allowed to uh, use this functionality and there are some users who are not allowed to use this fu uh, functionality. So in that case with the help of system.runAs uh, method we'll be able to figure out that how the functionality or how the code that we've written down is working for different different users uh, by just uh, taking the help from system.runAs method and that's all, all what it is. So yeah, uh, we have got all the methods covered. Uh, add, multiply, divide, and subtract. And here's the class. So now is the time to actually see that how, like we have created the test class, we have got the class, both are compiled successfully. Now what, how to do the test? So in order to run a test, let me tell you what are the steps that you need to follow. You can just write it down in a notebook as well. Uh, if you might forget about it, but it's very easy actually. So you need to go to this test, um, yeah, test menu, or test list menu, whatever you want to call it, and go to new run. And while going to the new run, you have to select the test class which you want to execute. And if you want to execute multiple test classes at once, you can do that as well. But I'll be executing only one single. Uh, I'll be executing only one single test class, which is test calculate that we have just created. And see over here, it is showing us all the test methods or all the unit tests that we have created inside this test class. So it's your call now that which test, which unit tests you want to execute, or which unit tests you want you want to run, and which unit tests you uh, you want to avoid. So we'll select all of them all methods selected and with the help of this run a button we'll be able to run the test so shall we <laughs> of course let's go so running test synchronously success so this success doesn't mean that uh, the results of test were success this basically means that we have executed the tests uh, as you wanted us to execute this id is saying to us that i have executed the test as you wanted me to execute but now let's now you figure out whether the test results are successful or not. So for that, we'll go to this test uh, whatever tab over here. And uh, if it is saying this green check, if it is showing this particular green check, I'll just uh, show it to you. Yeah, this one. 
then that means all the unit tests that you executed uh, or that you run executed successfully and there was no error that was found. Okay, so now let's open this up and see inside test calculate all the methods got executed successfully and if you want to see, uh, yeah, I mean test add or any, any one of them, the result looks like this. Yeah, I mean it, it was complete, there was no problem. So yeah, now let's see that like this was the best case scenario. Now let's see that the functionality is not working as expected, right? So what I'll do is, I'll just change also uh, like some some things inside it, and see how it reacts if there is a, uh, if there's certain problem into it. So okay, instead of uh, in in the subtract option, instead of uh, subtracting a f uh, or b from a, uh, what I'll do is I'll interchange it for like b minus a. Similarly for the multiply, I think it's fine. Uh, for the let's say for for this zero thing. We'll just comment the code and we'll just not cover this at all into our test cases or into our uh, unit test execution or test run. So now I'll go to new run. Uh, I'll click on to test calculate. Mm, I'll select all of them. I'll execute, I'll hit run. Now, if you can see, and, and I know you can see, this is, this was a failure, right? So this didn't uh, went well and let's see what didn't go well. So divide and subtract had a problem and let's see what was the problem. System dot math exception divide by zero. Exactly as expected. And this one assertion failed. So let's see what the assertion failed into. So expected value was 20 and the actual value that we got was minus 20 and that that's the problem because of which it got failed. So while executing a test run, if, uh, the, if, if the test fails, what we need to do is we need to change the code accordingly in order for the test cases to be working perfectly. So I'll just update the changes once again as we are expecting and we'll execute the test run once again and, if, uh, and after that we'll see that uh, whether the tests gets executed successfully or not. I don't know why it's taking so much time to save. Uh, let me try it again. It got saved. Now test run and in fact, like instead of uh, hitting new run and then selecting all of those back again, if you want to rerun uh, the tests, or if you want to rerun only the tests which got failed in the last run, you can select any one of them, but I want to uh, rerun all of them, so I'll rerun. I'll just hit the rerun instead of selecting it back again. Now see, the status is successful. Over here. And everything is executing perfectly. That's how it goes. And if you just want to execute some test, uh, some unit test, that like let's say we just want to uh, execute test subtract and test divide, nothing else. So we'll just run them and uh, we'll only see the results related to them. So yeah, test divide and test subtract were the only ones which got executed or uh, yeah, which got executed. So this is exactly how uh, you need to test a particular functionality or a particular code or an application inside Apex uh, with the help of this particular IDE. I hope you are able to understand.